What's up guys, here's Shahin. Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how you can create a dynamic lightning bolt in Photoshop with just one click. When it comes to creating lightnings in Photoshop, I've already seen several tutorial videos on the internet, but what always bothered me in the techniques most people used is that the lightning bolt actually never looked quite accurate to me, because like the edges always looked a bit noisy and too blurry and uh, not smooth and they are rounded corners instead of pointy. So I've tried several techniques to find out how, how I can make this more accurate, more dynamic, which is what I'm going to show you now. In fact, I'm going to show you two different ways how you can create an lightning bolt, but the techniques just stay the same. The first one is going to be more random, but the, in the second one, you will have more control about how the lightning bolt is going to look like or in which areas it's going to appear. For that, I've already prepared you something. In the first technique, we'll create the random lightning bolt. For that, the first thing we have to do is to create a gradient fill layer, which can be found down here. I choose gradient and choose a regular black to white gradient, which is usually up here in the first. Okay. The angle to zero and the scale to 20%. Why? Because the lightning we're going to create is going to be created in this gray area between the white and the black. So uh, depending on the width of this gray area, the lightning is going to fill this gray area. So always keep in mind how big you are making this gray field here. Let's check this for a smoother gradient. Okay. All right. And now what we've just done, creating a source layer, which is going to be affected with the following steps and effects we're going to add to. So like I said, we're going to create this lightning bolt, which is one click. For that, we're going to create an action. So let's open the action window, which is up here in window, choose actions, create a folder and name it as you like, and create a new action with clicking here on this icon and name it lightning. Lightning. All right. There you see the record button is active, which means the software is going to record every step you make. So let's close this and let's start with converting this layer to a smart object. Right click, smart object and name it bold one. Please always uh, remember that when it comes to working with actions, give your layers specific names so that the software knows with which layers it's working with. So first we're going to create our lightning by going up here to filter, render, different clouds. And you see now, this black crack here is only visible at the gray area of the gradient we've created. But of course we need a white lightning. So let's invert this by pressing command I or strike I, or just go up here to image, adjustments, invert. And now let's erase all these areas around the lightning we don't need. For that, we use levels by pressing Command L or Strike L, or just go up here to Adjustments again and choose Levels and change the Shadow Input level, which is already highlighted here, let's say to 220. There you see, Lightning looks good, doesn't look too big or too thin, and Confirm. Of course, it's up to you, depending on the image you use, which values you want. For those of you who are probably wondering why I'm actually using the same techniques of the videos I've criticized earlier. The difference here is that I'm not stopping here now. The thing is, I'm going to add even more filters and effects to make this bolt look more accurate and more dynamic. So while this is selected, we're going to add a so-called cutout filter, which can be found up here. Filter, filter gallery, go to artistic, Choose cut out and change the values of this filter. First, the number of levels is two because we only need one color. And edge simplicity, let's say five. Of course, again, it's just up to you. And the edge fidelity, let's say one. Yeah, it looks good. Play with this as much as you like. Okay, good. And let's confirm. And now let's use level one more time to increase the contrast, because if you look closely, that bolt is not clearly white. So let's change the highlight input level to, let's say, 100, and the shadow input level, let's say, to 50. Always use clear and simple values. You see. 
For the next step, we're going to need the channel. So let's open the channels window. Up here in window, choose channels. Because of the clear contrast of black and white, it doesn't matter which channel we now use. Of course, we have to create a selection by holding command or strike and click on the thumbnail of one of these channels. Let me see, let's create a selection. Close this and create a mask. Here we go. The last thing this layer needs now are layer styles, which can be found down here. And the first layer style we add is the color overlay. Let's choose blend on normal, color white, opacity 100. To make sure that all this area we have masked is clearly white and, and doesn't have some black or dark freckles here at the, cone, at the edges. Next, let's add auto glow. Change the blend mode to linear dodge, opacity 100, it's okay. And the color to, let's say blue. Again, it's up to you which color you want for your lightning. Let's spread one, not five. Size, let's say 100. Yeah, looks good. Okay, and confirm. That's it now for the Slayer. All we need now is to duplicate it with Command J or Strike J and change the values of this layer's auto glow. Change the opacity to 70, color to white, size to let's say 20. All right, looks good. And rename it. Always remember to give the layers names and hold Shift and merge these two layers into a smart object. Convert to smart object and name it lightning. And change the blend mode to linear dodge. There you go. Let's zoom out, there you see, it looks great. And now we can stop our action by opening the action window again, actions, and press stop. Now you see it has saved all of our steps. Let's close it. And if we did everything right, we can just repeat the first step and then play this action. Let's try it. Uh, let's delete this here. And again, create a gradient. Black and white. Angle zero. Scale, let's say 20. Check dither. Okay. So we've created now our source layer. This action is going to work with. So while this layer is selected, select the action, press play, and let's see what happens. There you go, looks great. In some cases, as you may have noticed already, let's close this, maybe some of you have noticed that sometimes when you create this, if I zoom in, there are some particles here that are getting created. In this case, you can just erase them with a mask, like here if I add a mask, brush tool, black color, here if we have somewhere else, no. That's it. All right, looks great. And that's now how you can create a random lightning bolt. But let's say you were on a certain image or a certain project where you want to control where the lightning bolt goes and in which areas it should appear. In this case, let's open this here. We already created here something. The process is actually the same. You just have to create a source layer or a template layer, and then just play this action. The difference this time is that we don't use a gradient fill layer. Instead, we just create a regular layer and choose the magnetic lasso tool. If I zoom out, and now you're going to choose the areas where this lightning bolt is going to appear. So if I start here and click here and here, right, if I let this go around, yeah, it looks good. And then close the selection on one side of the document. And now we're going to fill this areas like in a gradient with black and white. So while this is selected, press D to make sure that the, that your foreground and background colors are black and white. And press Alt Backspace to fill it with the foreground color, black, right? And now inverse the selection by pressing Command, Shift and I or Strike, Shift, I. We go and now press command backspace or strike backspace to fill it with what white and cancel the selection now by pressing command or strike D. And you see now we have these white edges on the black side. Let's erase them with the brush tool. All right here we go. All right, now we have a clear separation of white and black, like in the gradient we've created earlier. But the only thing that's missing 
we need to create the lightning, as you may have guessed, is this gray area between them. To create this, we're going to use the Gaussian blur. So go up here, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And as I mentioned earlier, the thickness of the lightning or how, how much space is this lightning is going to take depends on the width of the gray area. So let's say we choose radius of 50 pixels. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. And that's it. We've created our source layer. But note, please, in some cases, when you create this Gaussian blur, the edges of the white area also sometimes become gray a bit. So please remember to erase them with a white brush. So the only gray area we have is only this in the middle that separates black and white. So we've created our template layer. So all we need is to play this action again. Select this layer and this action. Let's play and let's see what happens. There you see. And if you want to optimize this more, let's mask this. If you close this, choose this layer and create a mask and hold command or strike and click on the thumbnail of this hand or the object you want the lightning to embrace and use the brush tool, black color. And let's say I here erase this here. There you go. Looks great. And again, here, if, if you have a particle here, use them too. Looks great. And if you want to make it look even more epic, you can, of course, create another lightning. Let's try it. Let's create our source layer again. Create a new layer. Zoom out. Use the Magic Lasso tool. And this time, use different paths of this lightning. Now let's see here. Here, let's say like this. Again, close the selection on one side, the area, right? And again, fill it with the foreground and background color. Use the brush tool to erase the edges. Again, use the Gaussian blur. If you want this lightning to look a bit thicker or thinner, of course, it's up to you which value you want. Let's say this time 30 pixels, not 50. And while this is selected, let's press again on this action and let's see what happens. There you go. Looks great. And that's how you can create a lightning bolt where you can really control how or where it's going to appear. As remember, here with the mask, you use particles. There you go. All right, this looks great. And of course, you are free to add a third and even more thinner or thicker lightning, however you want. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and helped you to get better in Photoshop. Comments below are appreciated. Please remember to like and to subscribe and to check out the other videos on my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.